Now, in the case of the problem given, you did have other forces involved. So, what we have here is only the work done by the gravitational force on the system. So that would be like one of these contributions to the total, to the work done by the net force. The work done on the system by the gravitational force is going to be equal to the change in the gravitational potential energy. Okay, Gravitational force does 8.8 .8 joules of work on the object. Its gravitational potential energy then decreases by 0.8 joules. So the change, the work done by gravity on the system is 0.8 joules. The change in potential energy is negative 0.8 joules. And you can think of this as potential energy decrease. Well, potential energy decreases, the energy got to go somewhere. Well, it goes into the kinetic energy of the object. More about this, we're going to do a lot more with this, but it's something you need to see right now. Okay, well, I tell you also in the problem now that friction does negative 0.1 joule of work on the object. And the ultimate question then was how much work is done by the other forces? Okay, well, we have the work done by gravity on the system, 8 joules, 0.8 joules. Work done by friction on the system, negative 0.1 joule. And work done by others. And I also tell you that the work done or the change in kinetic energy of the system is 2 joules. What's your conclusion? Well, this, this, and this have to add up to the 2 joules because this is the work done by your net force, work done by the first force, work done by the second force, and the work done by all the others has to equal the change in kinetic energy, which is said to be 2 joules, so the work done by all the other forces is easily found to be 1.3 joules. That's an application of the work energy theorem.